<laughs> Y'all didn't see that. Hey everyone, it's Chaz. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're ready for some more Leak Code because in this video, we're gonna be looking at problem 206, reverse linked list. So let's jump right in. The problem is very simple, or at least the description is very simple. Given the head of a singly linked list, reverse the list and return the reversed list. And they give us an example. Here I have some nodes. It's a singly linked list. I can tell because there's only one arrow coming out of each node. And I can see one points to two, two points to three, and so on all the way to five. And they want our output to start at the five. They want five to point at the four, four points at three, three points at two, two points at one, and one points at nothing or null. So even though they're showing it with all the nodes kind of swapping around and switching places, for me, it's going to be easier to think of it like this, where the nodes kind of stay where they are and it's actually the links that I reverse. Now this is listed as an easy problem on lead code. And once you know the algorithm, yeah, it's pretty easy. But when you don't know how to do it, if you've never done it before, it's just, it's so hard to me anyway, it's just so hard to visualize this and to figure out like exactly what I'm supposed to do to make this work. The only way to really demonstrate how this works is I got to do it for real. And honestly, doing it this way with some toys really helped me. So maybe it'll help you too. Okay, so what I've got here are the five list nodes and the nodes start off with node one pointing to two, two points to three, three points to four, or in other words, node three dot next is four. Four points to five, and then five points to nothing. That's actually the end of the list. But we're still gonna use an arrow because we need to be able to keep track of the fact that there is a node that's pointing to nothing or pointing to null. So the way a singly linked list works is that a node can only have one arrow pointing out from it. So this green arrow represents what node one is pointing to. I can't just simply turn it around because now I have two arrows coming out of the two and I can't have that with a singly linked list. So when I perform an operation like say two dot next in order to reverse this link, it's not this arrow that moves. It's this red one because that's the arrow coming out of the two. So this is what would happen. And the problem here is that I now have node one pointing to two and two pointing to one, and there's nothing pointing to the three, which means I just lost this entire section of the list. So what we're going to need to do is when we perform this operation to switch the link, we're going to need to store this node in memory so that our algorithm doesn't forget about it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create three new list node variables. We're gonna call them prev or previous, cur or current, and next or um, next. So basically the way this works is if I set current equal to the head of the list, then this node will now be a reference to this node. So current would be equal to node one. And if I do something like next equals cur dot next, then we're saying that whatever the current node is pointing to, that's what next should be equal to. So cur dot next in this case would be two. I don't even know if you could see that because of the dark blue, but it does, it says next. Maybe I can, here, can you see it now? All right, cool. All right, so now that I've gotten some terminology out of the way, let's begin our algorithm. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set current equal to head. And I'm going to set previous to be null. And just for the sake of illustration, I am going to put it over here. So I know that when I reverse this linked list, the five will be pointing to four, four will be pointing to three, so on and so on. And the one will be pointing to null. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set current dot next. I'm going to set that equal to null. That's going to cause this arrow to no longer be pointing at the two. It will instead be pointing out here to nothing, to previous. I don't know if, I, I don't know if you can see that on the screen. The problem is now there is nothing pointing at the two. 
And now we have no way of referencing this part of the linked list because the head of the linked list is one and it's pointing at null. So as far as Java is concerned, that's the end of the list and none of this is part of our list anymore. So that's not gonna work. What we need to do instead is we need to store whatever the next node is and hold on to that information so we don't lose it. So what I'm gonna do before I start performing operations on my list, I need to create another node called next and I'm gonna set it equal to current dot next. So whatever current is pointing to, it's pointing at the two. So my next node is equal to two or it's equal to node two. Now that I have this node saved in memory, it is now okay to change this link. So I'm gonna do current.next. That's gonna affect this arrow. I'm gonna set it equal to previous. And previous is null. It's not on any node right now. So now the end of my list looks the way it should. And now all I have to do from here is get these three rings, these three nodes that I created as variables to slide over in this direction so I can work on the red arrow. So I have to be careful about the order that I do this in. If I set current.next equal to next, and then I set previous equal to current, well, it's not gonna go here because current was changed first. So all three nodes will be in the same spot. So that's not gonna work either. So what we need to do first is set previous equal to current, and then set current equal to next. All right now I'm gonna continue my algorithm. I need two to be pointing back at the one. The problem is if I move this arrow, there'll be nothing pointing to the three. So before I move this arrow, before I set current.next, I have to change the value of next. I'm gonna set next equal to current.next. It's pointing at the three, so next is now three. Now I can change the value of current.next. I can change where this arrow is pointing to. So I'm gonna set current.next equal to previous. That takes the arrow and moves it back here. It now points at the previous node. And now, once again, I'm gonna slide these three rings over. I'm gonna set previous equal to current, and I'm gonna set current equal to next. And once again, before I can move this arrow, I need to update the value of next. So I'm gonna say that next is equal to current dot next. Now I can reverse this link. I'm gonna say current dot next, whatever this arrow is pointing to, is now equal to previous. So move this arrow. Now that I've set this equal to previous, it's okay to move previous. So I'm gonna set previous equal to current and current equal to next. And now that I've done that, I can update the value of next. I'm gonna set it equal to current dot next. So whatever the current node is pointing to, that's over here. Now that I've done that, I can update current dot next, set it equal to previous. Now that I've done that, I can update previous. Previous equals current. Now that I've done that, I can update current. Current equals next. And now that I've done that, I can update next. So next equals current dot next, whatever this is pointing to. Well, it's pointing at nothing, so it's gonna end up being null. And now I can set current dot next, which is the arrow, set current dot next equal to previous. And now if you notice, my list is now reversed, but the algorithm's gonna keep going. Let's just see what happens. So we set current dot next equal to previous. That allows me to update previous. So previous becomes equal to current. Current becomes equal to next. So now they're both null. And so what we're gonna do is when our current node leaves the list, when the current node becomes null so that there's no node in it, that's when our algorithm is gonna finish. So now that the algorithm is finished, we need to figure out what to return. We need the head of the list to be five. Right now, head is equal to one, way over there. So we can't return head, that's not gonna work. But we can return previous, since previous is actually on the node that we need. And so if we return previous, that'll give you the value of five. Five is pointing to four, four is pointing to three, three is pointing to two, two is pointing to one, and one is pointing to null, and that's exactly what we need. 
So I know this might be really confusing. I know I was super confused before I laid this out and looked at it. Like when I tried to just do it using code, I was so lost. So I'm just gonna show this one more time, but I'm gonna go a little faster and see if you can follow the flow. So let me reset this. So the head of my list is one, one points to two, two points to three, three points to four, four points to five, and five points to null. Create three nodes. Create a node called previous, a node called current, and a node called next. Let's start off by setting previous equal to null and current equal to the head of my starting list. I can't change this link yet because then there'll be nothing pointing at the two. So before I do anything, I have to set my next node equal to current.next. Then I can reverse this link, current equals previous, move previous over, move current over, move next over, in that order. Set current.next equal to previous, that reverses the link, move previous, move current, move next. Set current.next equal to previous, move previous, move current, move myself to the other side of the camera, move next. Set current.next equal to previous. Move previous. Move current. Move next. Set current.next equal to previous. Move previous. Move current. Current ends up outside of the list. That is going to be my condition to stop the algorithm. And now I have a list that's pointing in the direction that I need. How do I refer to it? Well, I do have a previous node that is at the head of my new list. So I will return previous. All right, so we've seen our algorithm and there's only one thing left to do. Let's code some Jav. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so I've got my code set up here. I'm back in your bottom right corner and I've got Lucky with me. The very first line here, I'm just dealing with an edge case where if the head of the linked list is actually null, so if there is no list, we're just going to return null. And it's just because our algorithm is definitely not going to work if the head is null because we're going to get a bunch of null pointer exceptions. So we'll just deal with it in the very first line. And then you can see here I created two of my little brass rings, the current node, list node current. I just set it equal to the head of the list and I made my previous node and I set that equal to null. And then I've got my while loop. This will run until the current node, that current ring that we saw, goes to null. And then here's where I create my third and final list node, that third ring, which I use to store the next node so we wouldn't lose it. Set that equal to current.next. Once we have successfully saved the next node in that next variable, we can now take current.next and set it equal to the previous node, which reverses the link. Now that we've successfully reversed the link, we can take our previous and current nodes and move them both forward. So previous moves up to the current node and current moves up to the next node. And then the cycle continues. So then I take that next node and I move it to current.next in order to save the next one. And the cycle just continues until I reach the end of the list. And when I'm all done, all of my links are reversed. And then finally, like we saw in my bedroom, that sounds weird. But as we saw, when the algorithm is all done, it's actually the previous node that ends up at the head of our new list. So we should return that previous node. And that's why my last line here is return previous. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I really hope this helped with reversing a linked list because it was so hard for me until I visualized it this way. So maybe this will help you too. Leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you'll see more videos. And that's all. I'll see you next time. So I had to move my blanket off the bed to make room for all this. Hey, baby boy.